Photographs that were never taken. In Texas, four 16-year-olds sit in the fossil of a paddle boat. They stole it from a pier that sat untouched for so long that its dust had started collecting dust. As they sit from the same can of light beer, they swallow every childish instinct they have to grimace, yet are so drunk on the taste of manhood that Jack can't pull out his iPhone quick enough to capture the flying fish that flops over their heads. But as they stomp through the doors at school on Monday, their shoulders will spread a little more godlike as they swear to their classmates that it was this big. In Alabama, a woman with valley-wide lips and mahogany skin that pants in the clutch of the 1846 sun is humming her chains away. The textbooks will show her next to the man who employed clothes and colonized her body, but will have nothing to say about the patch of cotton field where she found a song, or the sisters whose hugs were a tireless gospel that sharpened her spine against the weight of every whip. On Facebook, a man sits with a handful of debris in the form of old selfies, looking for the one where her lunar crescent lips first showed signs of waning. At Fox News headquarters, a thousand images of men in turbans are pumped through the veins of every television in the country. As we bulldoze through Iraq, our bullets are engraved with the phrase, never forget, but in five years, the news stations will scrub our memories of the sound Baghdad made when it hit the ground. At a frat house, a woman is gripping her waist and his shame as she pours into the streets the morning after her gutting. Her best friend will console her with narrow eyes, wishing that she could trust the quiver in her friend's voice, but they just don't make x-rays that can prove this kind of trauma. At a courtroom in Atlantic City, CCTV shows Ray Rice dragging an unconscious punching bag from an elevator, and the judge's imagination is still as narrow as a racehorse is blind. At a cemetery, 40 people dressed in black are squeezing tears from their eyes and can finally unclench their breath as they watch his coffin sigh into the ground. Nobody remembers the last time they saw an inch of daylight in his face, but the photo on the altar shows him beaming. Shows him long before he knew how to fill a syringe or admit that he was scared. Shows the story they'll dig their nails into when strangers ask, what was he like? In Portland, a kid wearing zombie face paint would trade all of his YouTube fame if he had the chance to tell the world that turtles are not the only thing he's interested in. <laughs> in London, a silver-haired saint, more commonly referred to as Mum, still thinks her son will start calling more often. Still has the audacity to believe that she deserves to have more to show for the 18 years she spent as his crash mat than a bruised sense of lonely and a fistful of photographs. In Palo Alto, a loud mouth with a microphone and sweaty palms is using convoluted poetry as a means of expressing the idea that he still exists when the camera stops rolling. He's got a scar on his right elbow to explain why he's still afraid of monkey bars. His heart still collapses on itself when he's near a woman wearing Princess by Vera Wang and he's still completely incapable of letting the phrase who loves orange soda go unfinished. This is all to say that even though a lot of the Kodak moments in his life never made their way to print, even though he's lost a lot of memories, he knows that they never lost him. And maybe just this once, that is enough. <laughs>